So continuing from TikTok, we're going to keep on with the restoration of the 1953 Westinghouse washing machine. I just put out a TikTok where I did a preliminary test on the washer and it was leaking pretty bad. I kind of expected that, but in this video, we're going to be trying to fix that leak so that we can use the washer reliably. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking apart the front half of the barrel. So this barrel is not one big piece. There's two halves and they're sandwiched together with a giant hose clamp. You can kind of see it around the outer ring of the washing machine there. We got to take that hose clamp off and I'm going to take the front half up out of the machine because I'm going to fix the leak that way. So here you can see the bottom of the hose clamp clamped together with this big nut and bolt setup. It goes around the entire outer ring here and there's a big gasket I'm assuming that's in the middle of that that is, you know, giving me that giant leak. I'm trying to be meticulous about how I take this front half off because I don't want to take the entire tub out because there's lots of electrical wiring connected to this tub with the electrical motors and whatnot. And all this wiring is very good. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. You can see that it's still pliable. It's not exposed. It's not broken. It's never been touched. It's all intact. And I just don't want to mess with it. I don't want to break it because there's no need to replace it. I know there's a lot of electricians that say you will need to, but from experience, I think it'll be just fine. As cool as this washing machine is, another cool thing is my t-shirts that Bell Air Baby from TikTok designed for me. These three retro designs are so cool. One is my 1956 Cadillac, and another one is my 1954 General Electric refrigerator. Such cool advertising on a t-shirt, such a nice retro design, and they're all made in America from the seed all the way to shipping and making the shirt and printing it, all done in the States. So make sure you check that out on my website. So anyway, back to what we were doing. I'm gonna be taking off that hose clamp right now. So that was the right size socket, but for some reason it didn't want to grip it really good. So I got a different socket of the same size and we'll give it a shot now. So after I got a different socket on it, it came off without a hitch. I'm very surprised being at the bottom of the machine where water would be that it wasn't so rusted that it broke because that happens a lot with rusted bolts is that they won't even come off. They'll just, you know, they'll break and you have to get another one. So now that that's off, I can kind of pry off that hose clamp. That's what I'm doing. I mean, it's been on there for 70 years, so you got to pry it a little bit. It'll kind of come loose. And once it's loose, it shouldn't be that difficult to take off of there. So because this clamp is so big, I gotta kinda be creative with how I fish it out of there. I can't just take it out from the top because it won't fit. So what I'm gonna try and do is sort of turn it and twist it out of there. So I got the front of it out of the machine, right? And if I kinda twist it and turn it and have it follow it, you know, I could probably get it out. And uh, I know this is like a time lapse, but <laughs> this actually took quite a bit to try and get it out. It got stuck a lot and uh, it's kinda tight quarters in there. And I got it off of there, so you can now see the exposed barrel. So you can see the holes, you know, where the water would go in. And here is the cover, right? And another big reason I needed to take this cover off was because you see that right there? That is part of the broken boot that sealed the door to the barrel, right? And here's the new door gasket. This door gasket is extremely important, extremely, extremely important. So I'm taking the old one off of there in order to get the new one on. So when I did the preliminary test of the machine, that's one of the things that was leaking so bad is that that boot was broken and it was just leaking water everywhere. It was just throwing water out. So that was just held on there with this rubber O-ring. That rubber O-ring is what kind of clamped it to the inside. So I'm going to do a different kind of clamp, um, a little more tight, a little more um, I don't know, durable, I guess. Some advice I got from some other people that had this same problem is to get two stainless steel hose clamps and put them together. 
And what is important to note about this boot is, is this is not the actual correct boot. And I'm so glad that I was able to get into some vintage appliance groups and talk to some people about this before I started the restoration on this because the boot, the original boot is unavailable. You can't buy it. It's nowhere to be found. So this one is from a Westinghouse washing machine that's a few years newer than this one would have been. So it's from like 57, 1958. And they said with some modification, this one will work. So I'm putting some Vaseline around there so that I can sort of take up some of that slack that was there just a minute ago and get this hose clamp around it so that I can, you know, I bent that lip over and then I hose clamp it and that is what, you know, seals it and that's what holds that gasket on. It's not how it was done from the factory, but it's really all we got because the original boot is not available and you just can't save the old one. I mean, the rubber gets hard, you can't save it. So here's that hose clamp fix. I'm very satisfied with it. I'm, I'm almost 100% confident that that's gonna seal. Um, it's very nice and tight. It went around good and I think it's gonna work. So now you can see that is the outer portion of the barrel and that outer ring is going to go on the door and the door is going to shut against that ring so you can see that um, that collar there is going to help you know it's going to seal from all the water so now we have the very fun task of putting this all back together and hoping that nothing leaks so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to try and put that hose clamp in first so that i can already have that in there and not have to fight this thing because it was really difficult taking it out i know it would be hard getting it back in so i want to get that hose clamp kind of situated before i get the that front half of that barrel put in and what's kind of cool about washing machines is like it's kind of like a weird thing you never think about is that the outer barrel that you're seeing, you know, the outer half you're seeing me put on doesn't turn, but that the barrel on the inside turns, you know, it's kind of cool how that they were able to do that. So now I have the front half of the barrel situated in there. You can see that black gasket that goes around the entire outer perimeter is on the front half and the back half here that I'm showing you is the mating surface. So that gasket goes around the whole ring and I know that gasket's kind of hard and you know, there's no replacement for it. So I'm gonna help it out and with this RTV sealant, which is what we use on cars. And I'm pretty confident that that's gonna work just fine because there's pretty violent conditions going on underneath the hood of a car, which is what we use this for. And it you know seals under over 200 degree heat um, under pressure so I'm pretty sure it's gonna do fine with this washing machine because it's not under any pressure and the water might be hot coming from the water heater but it's not 200 degrees hot like a car would be so I'm pretty confident using it so you can see that I have it in there now I'm hooking the springs back up and everything so now what I'm taking apart is the hot and cold water solenoid because when I turned the water on the first time without the machine being on, water was just squirting right past it. And even with the water on, it should not be letting water into the machine unless the machine is asking for hot or cold water. So I know the, I know the solenoids were bad. So this is a $13 uh, water solenoid from Amazon. It's not a special Westinghouse part or whatever. I was able to use the original wiring. Look at that, that is the original wiring. That just goes to show you how little uh, washing machine technology really changed since the 50s, I mean 60, 70 years ago. So now you can see this boot, right, a good view. So inside there is where I did the hose clamp fix and I pulled the collar out over the face of the machine and put, put it in, I lipped it in around so you can see exactly what I'm talking about now and the glass goes up against it and it should seal. I'm, I'm hoping it does. So right now I got the garden hose hooked up to it. So this red and blue hose setup that I got was from Lowe's. It's nothing special. It's just um, six foot long washing machine hoses and they work just fine. And so here's your cycle selector, hot, medium hot or warm. And then you pull it out and we'll see what happens. So I'm super happy the door is not leaking at all. That is totally fixed. But I am not liking what I'm seeing here. This is not good. <laughs> I don't like that. I took that whole barrel apart just for it to drip like that. I am not happy that I'm gonna have to take that back apart. That was a pretty big pain. So anyway, going forward, at least the machine is working. You can see that it is tumbling. Both of the electric motors are working just fine. Um, even the belts I haven't replaced, uh, those actually are the original Westinghouse belts. They say Westinghouse right on them. So you should be able to see the timer visually work. 
boom, right there, it goes through its cycle just like that. The timer turns every once in a while until it ends. So what you're seeing here is the pump spring broke. So this solenoid will engage and it pulls this wheel up and turns it and it turns the front pump and gets the water out of the machine and that spring is broke. So right there, that noise was that solenoid kicking in, that thump, and it's turning and nothing is happening. I gotta replace that spring, which kinda sucks. So we're gonna cheat a little bit and make it go through its cycle a little faster because I wanna get to the spin cycle to make sure that spin cycle function is working. You can see now the back wheel is turning a lot faster than it was earlier in the video. So the spin cycle is definitely working. Make sure you like this if you got value out of it and subscribe and follow my TikTok for more content like this.